Let's get ready. If you're at home, you may want to find a special place to sit. Or maybe you have a special light you could look at. If you're at school, your teacher may have a special candle for you to look at. Hi everyone, I'm Wendy. So far in our stories where about the Easter Sunday, where is it? Where is it? We've been where thinking about Palm it? Sunday and Jesus riding it anywhere. on a Jerusalem. Oh. Sam, Sam, oh. what, what is, is going here? on? What's wrong? What's wrong? I've lost something really important to me and I can't find it anywhere. Okay, I'm okay. I'm going to go over here. Where is it? I can't find it. Right, I think I need to go and help Sam look for whatever he's lost. You listen to Lois's story. Hi everyone, I'm Lois and I'm going to be doing your collective worship today. So last time you had someone speak to you about Jesus' death and resurrection and this week we're going to be talking about the next part of the story. But before we go into the story, I want you to think back to maybe a time when you lost something that was really important to you. Um, maybe your favourite toy or your favourite top or maybe you missed an opportunity to do something you love. And you probably know that losing something can be a bit disappointing, can't it? And it can make us feel a bit sad. And this is exactly what Jesus' friends felt like when he died on the cross. They felt like they lost something that was really, really dear to them. So we left off with Jesus resurrecting, which means that he came back to life, but his disciples didn't know this yet. So they felt a bit like they lost something that was really, really dear to them. So get comfy and let's listen to the next part of the story. Two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking to each other about the things that had happened. As they were walking, Jesus himself came and walked alongside them, but he didn't let them recognise him. What are you discussing with each other as you walk along? Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who doesn't know what's happened the last few days? What things? The things about Jesus of Nazareth and the priests and the leaders and they handed Jesus over to be crucified and we thought he was the one to save us. Yes, and besides all of this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Some of the women in our group said that they were at the tomb this morning and that when they saw that his body wasn't there, they came back and told us that they saw an angel who said that he was now alive. And then some more of us went and found exactly what they said. He wasn't in the tomb. But did you not listen to everything that the prophets had said? All these things had to happen. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into glory? Then, beginning with Moses and the prophets, he told them all the things about himself that were in the Bible. And as they came near to the village where they were walking to, Jesus went on as if he was going to carry on his journey. Stay with us because it's almost evening and it's getting dark. So he went in to stay with them. When they were at the table, he took bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognised him and knew that he was Jesus. But then he vanished from their sight. How did we not realise our hearts were so happy on the way when he was talking to us about the scriptures? Then that same hour they got up and headed back to Jerusalem and found all of the other disciples that were gathered together. A stranger walked with us to Emmaus and then he explained the Bible to us and so we invited him inside and we broke bread with him and we ate with him and then as soon as we knew it was Jesus he vanished! Jesus is alive! <laughs> So in this story, the two disciples thought that they lost Jesus forever and they thought that all of their hope was lost. But even though they couldn't recognise him, he was still there with them, wasn't he? And it is exactly the same with us today. So Jesus is still with us and he still cares for us, even if sometimes maybe we can't see him or things seem to go bad. And he is waiting for us to invite him into our lives and to live close with him because he really loves us and he wants to be our friend. And when we talk to him regularly, he teaches us more about himself. I wonder, if Jesus wanted to tell me something today, would I recognise him? And I don't know about you, but I like to talk to my friends quite regularly. And it's the same with Jesus, we can talk to him anywhere and at any time. So, if you think you'd like to do this, I'm going to pray for us. And if you want to join in, feel free to join in your head. Or if you want to, you can just say Amen at the end. So, Jesus, I want to thank you that we can learn more about you in these collective worship times. And that you can give us hope even when things seem to go bad. And I want to pray for everyone that's listening. I want to pray that if they want to be friends of you, they'll be able to talk to you whenever they feel like they are sad or they are worried uh, and they know that you're there all the time, even if we can't see you. In your name I pray. Amen.